Hello everyone. In this post, we would like to talk about time of ascent and time of descent. We have proved in the previous case that when air resistance is not taken into consideration, when air resistance, which is also called something like a viscous force, is not taken into consideration. We have proved it in the previous post that taken into consideration. We proved that time of ascent equal to time of descent. That means the body thrown vertically up with a certain velocity takes certain time to go up and after reaching the maximum height it will reach back to the same position vertically down in the same time. But if air resistance is taken into consideration, air resistance is nothing but a force which could be written like something like Ma, where M is the mass of the body. And we need to know that it always acts against the motion. The air resistance acts in such a way that it acts against the motion. If this air resistance is taken into consideration, time of ascent is going to be different from time of descent. Let us say I want to calculate time of ascent now. So let us consider a body, it is moving up, initially a velocity u is given, it is moving up, therefore the air resistance acting on it will be in the downward direction, r is nothing but equal to say some ma, then the acceleration that it is experiencing is r by m in the downward direction. And we know simultaneously acceleration due to gravity is also acting in the downward direction. As both of them are acting in the downward direction, the total acceleration acting is g plus r by m. Then I can write the formula time of ascent is u. Earlier you have written only g because you have neglected the air resistance. Now air resistance is taken into consideration to become g plus a r by m. This is the case of time of ascent. Let us say I want to talk about time of descent also. Time of descent. A body is coming down with the initial velocity, acceleration due to gravity of course acting in a downward direction. As the body is coming down, the air resistance starts acting in upward direction r equal to m a. So, because of the air resistance it will experience an acceleration r by m in upward direction, but g acts in the downward direction. So, what we can say? Effective acceleration that it can experience is g as acceleration due to gravity is in downward direction and acceleration due to the air resistance is upward direction. The effective acceleration that it is going to get is g minus r by m. Then I can write a formula time of descent is u by g minus r by m. So, it is very clear from this discussion that uh, this denominator is more as the denominator is more fraction value will be less. This denominator is less so the fractional value is more. So, what I can say very clearly in this case time of ascent is less than that of time of descent. They are not equal. If air resistance is neglected, they are equal. Otherwise, time of ascent is less. It goes less time in upward direction and it takes more time to come in a downward direction. That is the relation that we need to know when air resistance is also taken into consideration. Thank you. We have proved in the previous case that